LLNN had a record coming out and um, we wanted to have them do some shows around the release date. Both bands, Barnes and LLNN, played Gloomar Festival, so I booked this week of shows for them and it, at first I thought it's got to be a bit of an odd package. It was becoming clear very quickly that it's actually a very good match. When I saw that live, I was like, yeah, this makes a lot of sense to put these bands together. We definitely share the same DNA. We both have this sci-fi approach to our music. Music-wise, we were a bit, yeah, we'll see how this works. We, we are heavy at certain parts of our set, but they are scary. And they're scary. <laughs> For the last six months, Denmark has like been fully owned again. It was kind of weird to go back to venues where there are these restrictions. In Leipzig uh, was probably the biggest venue we've ever played. They had like this weird cross system on the floor, but still people could, uh, could uh, see the show without wearing their masks. So we've been actually very confident about the future and, uh, you know, thought that this is the beginning of shows coming back. Well, the recent developments obviously make all of that very questionable again. It's very frustrating. We've already postponed the tour three times and uh, it's becoming a bit of a running gag almost, you know. It's like, uh, when will we finally be able to do this? But it's out of our control, obviously, and we can only hope for the best. When we started LNN, uh, I said to the guys, I don't want to be signed to any record label except either Death Wish or Pinati Records. I'm very happy that Robin got our demo to back in 14 or some shit like that. I started listening to their Marx EP, which totally blew me away back then. And now, six years later, we have this strong working relationship. We are a team. We feel confident with the guys. They are our bosses in some weird way, but also our friends and they believe a lot in us and support us and help whenever they can. It's a band that really has a vision. I think they've really created a sound of their own that is not just based on sheer raw heaviness, but it's also the dystopian sci-fi movie soundtrack synths that blend uh, in with the, with the wall of guitars. That's just something they have really perfectionized somehow, and I don't really know any other band doing it that way. I am a huge fan of Scraps of Tape, which is Kenta and Johan's other band. They're one of the most underrated Swedish bands. And so I went to the Berlin show a couple of years ago and then got to know Johan that night. And he told me already back then that he has another band, which was Barnes back then. I instantly fell in love with it and uh, felt like this is a record I really want to release on Pelagic. The response from uh, Robin and Paul was, it's an instant yes. <laughs> that was a really good one. Yeah, that felt good. Yes, I can't hear really First time I saw the Ocean Live, I think it was in 2004. So it's also been quite interesting to see the Ocean grow as a band. It's a completely different band now. They have progressed so much. Paul is such a great drummer. He's a good blaster. He is. A, he's a really underrated blaster. So.
And uh, you know, he's actually a pretty good singer. Is there anything that guy can't do, man? What the hell? Goddamn talented Germans. travel party of all these bands involved and also the promoters and the and the crowds they were all just super thankful and appreciative of the fact that we finally had this chance to get together to play music again and it's been really nice vibes yeah we were just talking that this had, this has to not be the last time we play together the world just needs to stop fucking burning all the time <laughs> you know <laughs>